summer. I love summer. I don't have to get up early and take the kids to school every morning. That's what I love the most about summer. Because <laughs> it's not just taking kids to school, it's getting them out of bed. How many have a hard time getting your kids out of bed? Good Lord. You think those kids were born to worship their born to sleep? Yeah. They want to sleep and sleep. What are you teenagers laughing at? You're the ones I'm talking about. Yeah. It's like it's like noon. It's just like when you just you just start to think about waking up about noon. And uh, amen. <laughs> but I love summer, and uh, it is summer, and uh, it's nice to have a little rain this morning to kind of cool us down a little bit. And uh, we've been talking in here a lot about uh, a certain topic. How many of this is your first time at uh, Lincoln? Raise your hands. This is your first time, brother. This is your first time. <laughs> if you've been here the last three or four weeks, we've been doing a series on what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be carnal, and what it means to be a carnal Christian. We kind of drew a line in the sand and we said, you know, there's these one of three places that you kind of are or you're not. And one of these places is this place called the world. It's, it's, it's this side of the salvation line. It's people that they may even believe there's a God. They may even pray to a God, but they don't acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Son. They've never accepted Christ as their personal Savior. And they live in a whole world that has all these things to offer and all these things to do. It has its own music. It has its own um, leisure activities. It has its own fun. It has its own set of standards. It has its own definition of right and wrong. All those kinds of things. And you cross that line, and whenever the day that you say, you know what, I'm going to make thee God my God. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. That he died on the cross, that he rose again, and that he's alive today. And I ask that God, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, to live inside of me. And I give my life to him. And no longer live for myself, I belong to him. And we do that, and we tell the whole world we've done that through baptism. And then we begin to walk with God. But... There's a third place, and that's a place right here where people who are living underneath God, they're saying, you know what, I'm going to walk in His ways, I'm going to learn His ways, I'm going to learn what he, what he teaches, I'm going to learn what He believes, I am going to become more and more like Christ because that's what I'm supposed to be, Christian, I'm a follower of Christ, okay? But we talked about how folks who have made this kind of commitment, for whatever reason, they're going to slip back over here, right up against that line. They kind of want to live here. They want to do church, but they also want to do the fun things that they do in the world. They want to profess Christ as their Savior, but they want to live like the rest of the world the rest of the week. It's this place, it's this balance again, and this place they kind of straddle this line. And we've talked about the danger of living here. We've talked about not just that it's dangerous, but it's, it's, it's fatal. And then we even took it a step further. We said, you know, in fact, if you live here in this area, this carnality, with whatever title you call it, you call it, pretty good chance you're not even here. Pretty good chance you're just here and you visit there. That's what we've been talking about. Then lastly, we went a step further. And we said it's not just about not living here, the dangers of living here, but it's all about that you were created for so much more. God has this amazing journey for you. Each person here, he has a purpose for your life. There's a reason you were born. There's a mission that requires your DNA that's waiting for you to start walking in it. I believe that with all my heart. But to do that, you can't say, God, man, I want all of you. I'm all in. But I want to stand right here because when I'm not with you, I want to be with that. I want to live there. Okay? I want to talk like that. I want to look like that. I want to sing like that. I want to do those kinds of things. That's kind of what I want to do. But I'll give you Sunday mornings. And when I'm in trouble, I'll pray. And when I can remember to pray, I'll pray. But people ask me if I'm a Christian, I'll tell them I'm a Christian. We talk about how God's got so much more. He has this whole set of stuff for you to do. If you'll just stand here. If you'll just begin to seek Him, draw near, be in His house. Learn His word, learn His ways, be with His people. You begin to grow. Not just grow, grow, but grow up in the Lord. And if you'll do that, He has something God sized for you, something heroic. And last week we talked about what those kinds of things might be. Now let me let me walk through this though. Let me make sure you understand. 
In this place right here, on the other side of this line, this is where most of the world lives. The Bible says that wide, 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 wide is the gate that leads to destruction. But really, really, it's a really narrow gate that leads to salvation. It's a really narrow gate. People call us narrow-minded. They can call us what they want. They, they, they call us extremists when we say there's only one way to God, and that's through Jesus Christ. That's considered extremist. And so people choose to live here. Now, it's not that they don't know about there. They know about there. But a couple of different things happen when they look this way. One, sometimes what they see over there doesn't look a whole lot different than them. And so if you just say this, but you live just like me, they, they call that hypocrisy. Some people say, you know, the church is just full of a bunch of hypocrites. It's just all hypocrites. Why would I want to do that? For some people, like the Word says, it says, you know, the reason they don't come to light is because they love the darkness. They, they like all the stuff they get to do over here. There's things that they can do over here that you're not allowed to do over there. And that's kind of where they will live. But let me tell you a little bit about this place. This place over here, throughout the centuries, has wrought more evil and more destruction more death than you can imagine. Plagues have come because of the sins of man. In this place over here, in America alone, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of children that are abused every day. In this place. This place, just the United States. In this place, there's girls that get pregnant every single day. Every single day. Under 17, under 16, under 15. Praise God, some of those girls have those babies. But you know, the number one killer of African Americans in America, you may know? Abortion. It's abortion. It's abortion. By the thousands, thousands and thousands and thousands. In this place is all the drugs, alcohol that you could ever want. Never mind the fact that our rehab centers are so full. They are so full. Never mind the fact that alcohol is the number one cause, alcohol related deaths is the number one cause of deaths in teenagers. Never mind that it's 8% of all abuse cases. In this place right here is drug addiction. Drug addiction that has people so strong in their grip that they can't shake it, they can't let go, they, they can't do it. And it ruins families and it ruins lives and kills people. It causes literally an entire nation, just to ourselves, over 30,000 people to have died in the last five years in the war on drugs in Mexico. 30,000 people. Just because of drugs. That's what's over here. Over here, in schools, um, our governor just signed into law requiring all elementary schools to teach the role of homosexuals in our history. That's not required in our public schools, in our history books. That's what's over here. Over here, it's murder, it's mayhem, it's theft, it's burglary. Over here is an entire industry that makes millions and millions and millions and billions of dollars selling images of children doing sexual acts or undressed, or nude. Children. That's not even the adults. Over here, industries are built on that. Over here, our people, is, is the people that will actually put people in crates and ship them across oceans. They'll arrive in our ports right here in Long Beach, some in San Diego. They'll unload these crates some will come pick up the people that are in there, and those people will be sold into slavery. There's a man in Orange County that he's made it his passion to rescue children from, from human trafficking. He literally goes in and he'll go to, he'll find a, 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 a pimp or a person that sells people, and he'll say, uh, he said, I want somebody young. I say, how young? He'll say, what do you got? He says, 16? He says, 14, he says, younger. He goes, yeah, I, think I, I got a few under 12. He goes, that's the ones I want. I'll pay whatever you got. And so they'll take his money, 
They'll bring the kids out, he snatches them, he takes them away, and he rescues them. But the very fact that there are people, not just that there are people who would sell a child to a man, but the fact that there are men who would pay money to be with a child, that's what's over here. That's what's over here. In Africa, millions of children who are growing up without a mom and a dad due to the AIDS epidemic. Millions. I can take you to Europe right now and we can get on a, on a, on a, on a train and we can go through city after city after city where the, city, the center of those cities are the most amazing chapels, churches that are no longer churches or chapels. They're now hotels and restaurants and eateries and museums. Because the light dimmed and the light died in those places. That's what's over here. Over here, throughout history, has been concentration camps. Over here, throughout history, has been the most horrific kinds of torture that you can possibly imagine. That's what's over here. That's what's over here. And over here is every kind of pleasure that you could ever want. It's there for your taking. Over here, you can be married to this person, but make an agreement with this couple right here, and then you just kind of exchange partners whenever you want to exchange partners. That's what's over here. It's all over here. That's what's here. That's in Orange County, by the way. Over here, a man can take his paycheck and choose, instead of paying rent and paying for groceries, can drive just one hour to a casino on, our, on any, any place here in Southern California and lose his entire paycheck. And it's gone. Forever it's gone. And have to go home with nothing. That can happen right here. It's all here. The Bible says that sin is, is pleasurable for a season. You see it? God's plan. Here's what I want to talk to you about today. Here's God's plan. God's plan is for you to come over here to stand in the center of his will and to seek him. And when you do that, there's this, there's just this protective place that you enter. Now it's not protected, but it's protected. It's not always safe, but it's always safe. Not always would be considered secure, but you are always, always secure. You may not always be at peace, but you always, always will have peace. You see it? This is what he chose for us. Now, there's three stages I want to walk you through today. One is where he wants you to stand. Now, let me just show you this real quick, okay? There's a progression I want to, I want to walk you through. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. explains it like this. That when we're under this, okay, when you accept Christ or you make a decision to follow Christ, because you know what? And not everybody agrees. This is kind of a theological debate among pastors. It's one thing to have accepted Christ as your Savior and say, you know what? You are the God and I, and I ask you to live inside of me. But it's another thing to say, and you are my Lord. Is he your Savior, or is he your Savior and Lord? In some places in Scripture, it makes no distinction that the two are the same. But the idea is this, that whenever you start to go right here, the idea is this, is that whether you're 50 or 5, whether you're 45 or 35, when you first begin to walk with Christ, you're like a newborn child. That's what it says. You don't know his word because you've not studied his word. You don't know him very well. It's just like when you meet, you may have a person you're going to be the best friends with in 10 years, but that first time you meet them, you don't know very much about them. You get to know them over time, through conversation, through spending time together, through going through things together, for sharing your secrets, for being able to trust them, 
They come through for you. You come through for them. You begin to build a relationship. That's the same way it is with Christ. Same way it is with Christ. And here's what it says. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 1. It says, Brothers, I could not address you as spiritual, but as worldly, mere infants in Christ. And that's what, you know what? I know some people that have been saved a long time, but they're still infants in Christ. It's like I can take a five-year-old, okay, and I, and I can say, okay, all the five-year-olds are going to start to learn to read at age five, okay? But if one kid chose not to participate, they didn't do the classes, they didn't do the lessons, they didn't write those letters, up, they didn't do any of that, I don't care if they're 15 or 16. They can't read, they can't write. Do you understand that? They've never grown up in that. Too many of us are there. It says, as spiritual but as worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you are not ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly. Right here. For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere men? For when one says, I follow Paul, I follow Paul, and he goes on to explain all these different things. And then go to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. church. 